interest in this one from Cincinnati and Vanderbilt two teams trying to make large statements about the future of their program nobody more so than head coach for Vanderbilt James Franklin he's on the field now with Quint coach your first game as a head coach in a bowl what emotions are you dealing with yeah just really excited for our kids looking out here and seeing all the black and gold that showed up today just really proud of our whole program what's the mindset of your team right now I think they're focused we've had a great week of practice we've handled this just like any other week uh, and I, I think we're ready to go thank you thank Dave. you so much all right thank you Quint it would be an understatement to call James Franklin and Cincinnati coach Butch Jones energetic I'm not sure that word does them justice yeah they both kind of take the lead for their teams and uh, you're going to see a lot of good uh, highlights from the coaches today and their excitement and both these teams you always wonder about who's more motivated in a bowl game I think it's pretty equal both these teams are trying to tell the country that they are serious programs to be reckoned with Cincinnati co Big East champions with West Virginia and Vanderbilt trying to get a winning season this is just the fifth bowl game they have played in in 121 years of football they won the toss and deferred so you see will be receiving and we do have a bit of a breeze going from right to left pretty much at the back of Spear the kicker there you see so that could be a factor today Ralph David Abernathy the fourth grandson of the great civil rights leader stands by for this kick and the AutoZone Liberty Bowl begins with a touchback so here he is, Zach Kalaros, a senior from Steubenville, Ohio. And just about everybody in Steubenville, if they aren't here, they're tuned in to watch this one today to see their native son, who loves his hometown, wants to be a football coach in his future. And he worked unbelievably hard to get back for one football game. Yeah, it's really uh, miraculous, Dave, as I mentioned at the top, that he is able to, to come out here and compete today. It was something they thought was a long shot at best when he first broke that ankle. But here he is, as close to 100% as a guy could be this time of year. He has an outstanding running back at number 23, Isaiah Pede, voted the team MVP and one of the best in not just the Big East, but the entire country. And our first play from scrimmage is a fake to Pete. Kalaros under pressure gets rid of it. And underneath, caught made by Adrian Robertson. And Robinson out to a five-yard pickup, second down and five as Ray takes you through our impact players, brought to us by Chick-fil-A. Well, at the top of the list, Dave, is Isaiah Pete, as you mentioned. What a dual threat he is as far as being able to catch the ball out of the backfield and then also an extremely fine runner of the football. Yeah, we'll get a good look at it right now. He gets maybe a yard to the 26, and maybe not. Looks like he more or less tripped on himself. This is a good Vanderbilt defense. Give up only 123 rushing yards on average per game. Yeah, and I want to mention Anthony McClung, a uh, top receiver for Kalaros. And then on the defensive side, a guy to look out for for Vanderbilt is number 13, Chris Marv, their senior all-everything linebacker. He makes the calls. He gets the defense where they need to be, and he's a pretty tough customer. escapes wondering about his mobility tough throw and looks like he was out of bounds and it is so it's incomplete at around the 35 yard line Kenbrell Tompkins is arguing that he was in bounds but the officials had a very good look at it so Cincinnati will have to punt all right Tim Fuger he gets off early here a nice spin move to the inside he's the one who pressured Kalaros and then you see right at the end Tompkins not able to maintain his feet in bounds so a difficult spot for Pat O'Donnell, the punter, and maybe even more difficult for Jonathan Kraus, the returner, because as you'll see here, Kraus is standing in the sun, and O'Donnell will be kicking out of the shadows. Now, eventually, naturally, all the sunshine will go away, but in the meantime, it might be tricky, but this is a funny-looking punt, and it bounces by Kraus. He might as well just let it go. And that's going to go inside the 20-yard line for the... 26th time this year, a 61-yard kick for Pat O'Donnell. So here is Jordan Rogers, whose first start of the season was back in October the 22nd in Vanderbilt's game against the Army. And he is a redshirt junior from Chico, California, JC transfer from Butte Junior College. And that last number right there, at least one TD in all six starts, says a lot. Yeah, and he has a 3-3 three and three record since he's moved in as the starting quarterback, but their offensive production has nearly doubled since he's gotten in there. 
Very good runner of the football. Manages things well and has a nice arm. You take a look at also the tailback for Vanderbilt at the 11-yard line. Number two, Zach Stacy is a good one. And on the delay, Stacy. However, this Cincinnati front four is very tough. Walter Stewart in there on the stop. We take a look at today's impact players. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Starts out with that guy you mentioned, Dave Zach Stacey. Just carried the football. He is a second team all-conference SEC uh, running back who is really good both receiving. He's an all-around back. He can get it all done. And Chris Boyd is the favorite target, I think, of Jordan Rodgers and then Derek Wolf for Cincinnati. They're all Big East defensive linemen will create havoc today. Second and ten. Little trick play here early. Rodgers off of the flea flicker down the field in the shadows, and it is incomplete. The pass defended by Devin Drain, a cornerback from Plantation, Florida, and it brings up third down and ten. Great discipline by Drain and company in that Bearcat secondary. As you see, there's really nobody open for Rodgers, and he will do this. He'll throw it up, trusting his taller receivers to go up and make a play, but Boyd had no chance because Drain was all over that one. And not surprising to see Vandy bring out a trick play early. No, they, they had a lot of time on their hands, and they, I tell you, John Donovan, the offensive coordinator, likes that kind of stuff anyway, and he told us he was going to roll something out early just to get that Bearcat defense thinking a little bit. Rodgers, ooh, out of the flat. That was nearly intercepted. There was a chance that time for Malik Bomar, number four, to come away with that. Zach Stacy was the intended receiver, so it's going to be fourth down and ten. Neither offense able to do much in their first possessions. And you see Zach Stacy came out of the backfield. He's up at the top of the screen just waiting on that thing. And it looked to me like Rodgers got, uh, I don't know, just maybe pushed inside a little bit as he let that thing go. Wasn't a good throw. And look who's back to return the punt for Cincinnati, Isaiah Pede. That is a high, high kick by Kent. Checks up at the two. Oh, that's going to be fantastic defensive field position for the Commodores. It's going to be down at the five-yard line. So a Cincinnati offense that has had a hard time getting going is going to have a very hard time after Andre Howell was able to tip that back. 44-yard punt. The Blues? It was Bo Diddley. That's Harry Wayne Casey. You know him as Casey of KC and the Sunshine Band. He visited the remarkable St. Jude Children's Research Hospital here in Memphis last month. He had a meet and greet along with an autograph and photo session with the St. Jude's kids and their families. And he's the halftime entertainment also. Uh -huh. That ought to be fun. That's the way I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So from the five-yard line, Cincinnati, just a little bit of sunshine on their backs and in their faces, but it's still that weird sky going on right now. Gorgeous day. 66 degrees, the third warmest Liberty Bowl ever. So we drew a great weather card today. Playing it straight. They'll go to Pete. Bounces off the blockers, and he will get perhaps the first first down of the day. Let's see where they mark him. That's a 10-yard pickup. Eric Samuels on the stop. Center, excuse me, Vanderbilt brings a blitz here, and you're going to see here they all come. You get a hat for a hat, but the vision of Isaiah Pede is what allows him to cut all the way back around the other side and get the initial first down in this ball game. Yeah, and that's the kind of play he can make for you, Dave. Well, that's amazing vision that Pete has, one of three 1,000-yard rushers in the Big East. And the Big East Offensive Player of the Year gets the football again. Breaking through some arm tackles, plays off another block. He has another first down before he's pushed out of bounds by Casey Hayward. Let's take a look at Isaiah Pete and some of his ability to cut back. And he's been doing this all year. There he is. You see him in the backfield right there. He got the circle on him. Watch the vision he has. Man, he sees this gap right there. Even though he's looking and turned the other way, he's able to stick the foot in the ground and get himself up the field. And, and they lose the football. Vanderbilt comes away with it with Hayward at the 25, down to the 21-yard line. Casey Hayward, second team all SEC performer. Big play by the Vanderbilt defense. This is what they've been able to do throughout the season. Force turnovers. Early in the year, they were able to do it extremely well. Now they're doing it here again at the end of the season. Sixth interception of the year for Casey Hayward. He's been that their best cover man back there, and he just stepped in front of Tompkins and took it the other way. And 
Boy, Butch Jones already worked in the officials. Not sure if he thought maybe there was interference on that play, but the bottom line is it's a big turnover for Vanderbilt. Their 28th takeaway, their 18th interception, and they have a one of the many ways this team has gotten better is in the turnover margin. Their plus six improvement from last year to this year. Rogers shoulder fake under pressure. He is a good runner, and he'll get to the 30, make that excuse me, the 16-yard line before 37. J.K. Schaefer brings him down after a gain of seven. And Rogers did well to hang on to the ball there because he didn't see Schaefer. You know, he said he's a good runner, Dave, but he is a great scrambler. And he just has a knack for knowing when things are breaking down and then ha has the innate ability to feel where that pressure comes from and then take a play where it, should, it looked like a sack for sure. Next thing you know, he's out the other end for seven yards. He he's spectacular at scrambling. This is Zach Stacy. He'll get the first down inside the 10 yard line. Stacy gets to the seven. So it'll be first down and goal for Vanderbilt off the Hayward interception. Well, he had a nice block that time as his uh, right guard, Josh Jaleski, pulled around in front, makes the block, and Stacy sees it, makes the cut off of it, and gets that first down at the seven yard line of the Bearcats. Zach Stacy now about 10 yards away. They're getting very close, not 10, but about 40 yards away from 2,000 in his career. Stacy again inside the five and down to the goal line. Touchdown. He got a great block from Fitz Lassing, his fullback. Little misdirection type play, and Lassing leads the way, creating the space for Zach Stacy to get the doors on the board. Ran through some arm tackles too. These both of these backs, Stacy and Feet, are too good for arm tackles. So Cincinnati pays for its turnover. The Calaros interception by Hayward leads to the first score of the game, and now we'll see how Calaros is able to rebound after the three-play 22-yard drive in 72 seconds. So we'll see how Cincinnati can respond. They began the year seven and one, and then they had the Calaros injury and struggled for a couple of games, and then were able to put it together near the end. They become Big East co-champions, five and two in conference play, nine and three overall. Butch Jones is Big East coach of the year, Big East offensive player of the year, Isaiah Pete, and the co-defensive player of the year is Derek Wolf. So the Bearcats having a banner season. And Abernathy will let that go for a touchback. And that is indeed the end of the first quarter. So Vanderbilt, Jordan Rogers taking a blow for the team, but the defense comes up big and sets up Vanderbilt for the offense. This presentation of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl will continue after a message and a word from our ABC station. Zach Kalaros returning from a broken ankle suffered November the 12th. He was told not to expect to play any more football, but he rehabbed fiercely to get back just for this one game. And down the field goes George Wynn. Wynn down in the clear to the 30 25 win. Gets a block downfield and he'll go. Or they could just hand it to George Wynn and let him go to the house. 69 yards. You're going to see Wynn just take this hand off. It's a zone uh, stretch play, and they get the edge. You see him do a nice job of staying in bounds, even though the defender was coming down low at him. That was Ladler. He wasn't able to make the play, and it was Wynn off to the house. George Wynn came into this game with 141 total yard trudging. 69 on that one. The PAT by Meliano sneaks in there. And an explosive and shocking play by Cincinnati has even up the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. George Wynn, outstanding. He takes his opportunity, makes the most of it with an escort all the way to the end zone, and we're all knotted up here in Memphis. The point is with the Cincinnati offense is the first 16 plays of the game for them, 45 total yards. And there's some other problems they've had. Four plays was their longest drive. They haven't hit a wide receiver yet, and then they get that. 
Yeah, that's what you do. You know, you just keep hammering, keep hammering, and you hope that something opens up for you. And, and as soon as you do, put a little crack in that defense somewhere. Yeah, you, boy, it just helps you down the road. It, it creates doubt in people's minds, and it, it'll open up other things because people will start to, you know, worry about, oh, what did I do wrong? What else do I have to do? Maybe I got to do someone else's job now. And the things start to crumble once you get a little crack in that, in that defense. It's a pretty good kickoff. The wind at his back. Yep, and this will be Stephen Clark at the goal line. And Clark, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, wow, was that a shot delivered by Adrian Wiley. Woo. These are the ones you, that you live for if you're a special teams guy. Make that Adrian Witty who yeah, knocked the that's, wits. That's, oh. I'm trying to think of something witty to say, but I, I tell you what, I ain't going to try and top that hit. That's a good one. Oh, my goodness. Clean hit, too. No flags. My, my. That, that's something that'll get the boys excited on the sideline. Witty, a sophomore at a Deerfield Beach. That's right near the in between West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale. I'm not surprising that Clark is a bit shaken up after taking that hit. Hopefully he'll be able to get back into the game. Jordan Rogers under some pressure. Look out, Cincinnati sack masters, and they get one there. That's a loss of a yard. 45 sacks for Cincinnati that time. Dan Giordano, number 99. And earlier in the game, I mentioned the UC helmet. You see a number on the side there, and the UC symbol, the traditional symbol on the other side of the helmet. Well, that is the player's bowl gift. They take that home. That is their reminder of being in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl this year. $200 value and uh, priceless to these guys who are playing in this ball game. Second down and 11. Running away from Giordano that time. Rodgers, he's right around the first down mark. You see the official at the top of the screen. And it looks like he moved away there after a 10-yard pickup. John Hughes in there on the stop, a senior from Gahanna, Ohio. He's going to be short of the first down, third down, and less than a yard to go. Another example of the excellent scrambling ability for Jordan Rodgers. I mean, it's what sets him apart, in my mind, is his vision and his feel in the pocket and then his ability to go make a play when everything breaks down. Watch this blitzer coming up on the top. Off he goes, unmarked, and in traffic, that pass is caught and then dropped at the 43-yard line. Unable to hang on to it was Jordan Matthews. Looks like he would not have had the first down, but it would have been very, very close. Yeah, and I've, I saw this particular one on film, Dave. That's why I knew it was coming. You're going to get an outside move there and then an underneath right there by that outside rusher. And that, once again, is Brandon Mills, that cheetah linebacker for Cincinnati. And even though Rodgers got it off, he paid for it and then just needs better concentration down the field. And I thought that one should have been caught. And there's Isaiah Pede for his second punt return. First one, he didn't get anywhere with it. Another scoop. And that punt may have been partially blocked. No, it wasn't roughing. blocked because that's a flag. That's roughing. That's yep. the 15-yarder, I believe, right there. Had the ball been tipped, the flag would not have come out. So a major mistake by the Cincinnati. Cincinnati special teams that might have been Haley in there a little bit early now Butch Jones is going to say wait a minute somebody got a hand on that ball yeah, he's crying tip foul. The kicker. The a down. yeah Reuben Haley you're right Dave is the guy who was in there with that pressure and Butch wants to tip but I don't believe there was I mean the referee was standing right there let's take a look at it ourselves you're going to see he just comes free and unblocked. And the, the punter, he really needs to work farther over with that, that wall that's in front of him. He kind of stayed behind it. That allowed the guy to get through. But there was no tip on that. The second, by the way, another concern for James Franklin and his step, that's the second bad snap that the Vanderbilt punter has had to deal with, Richard Kent. So that's something that I'm sure they're aware of and they have to improve on or else. Yeah, and you're going to see Cincinnati come after every punt until he proves he can snap it perfectly. But with the penalty, it is Vanderbilt football right at midfield. A lot of times teams will take deep shots after getting a fortuitous break like that. See if Vanderbilt wants to go that route.
Look out here, another sack, 46 on the year for Cincinnati as J.K. Schaefer led the charge. Let's visit Robert Flores in the studio right now. Robert? Seven seven here in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Rogers, nice little snatch off the ground, or was it? Well, he had his knee down yep. when he caught the football, and then Boyd not, has to uh, know better than that. But that's got to be a better throw from Rogers. This is not a difficult throw. He, he's got to stick it up on, on the numbers, lead his receiver. Here's Boyd. He's going to step up, come back. But here he is. You see that right there? You got to throw that a little bit more on your man. Give him a chance to make the catch and go down the field. But I, I, I wouldn't put that one on both of them. But I think Boyd needs to keep his leg up off the ground. Third and 15. Rodgers, three of nine for 22 yards. Again, the Cincinnati front. Wolf in pursuit. Rodgers will just take off. Takes a good shot. Clean hit by Drew Fry. But it's a gain of nine. And that's probably the best that Vanderbilt could hope for, all things considered. So there's a couple of reasons. Right now, that Cincinnati front line, Ray, appears to me to be winning the upfront battle. They are. And, and they uh, have no conscience when it comes to playing laterally up front, Dave. They are going up the field vertically. And uh, when you have good linebackers, and they do with J.K. Schaefer and Bomar, you can afford to do that. And they get <laughs> penetration in a hurry. That's a good snap this time for Ken. He rolls the rugby punt and gets it down the field. Fair catch made by Milligan on the 13-yard line. So a good job that time by Kent, who had a good snap at last and does his defensive favor, pinning Cincinnati inside the 15-yard line. Pete right up the middle. Pete just short of the first down. He fell about one yard short, brought down by Chris Marv. So second down and about a yard, Cincinnati. This is where having a veteran quarterback like Zach Kolaris really helps you in a hurry-up situation towards the end of a half. And there was an example there, Ray, as Pete gets the first down of a kind of play where Kolaris might have kept the football and taken off, and they're just not running that today. No, he's not even reading it, in my opinion. He's, he's just handing that thing off. I, I believe he's under instructions to just hand that ball off for right now. Delaro's coming back after a very serious ankle injury. George Wynn is now in the tailback position. He was injured November the 12th. Didn't play any of the remaining regular season games and rehabbed furiously to get back just for his last college game. Kolaris, that time on the roll, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Alex Chisholm still. The wide receivers in Kolaris just not even on the same bus right now. Second down and 10 coming up. Yeah, I don't know if, it, if the ankle is bothering him. Or what? But that's a throw that I've seen Zach Kalaros make many a time. You know, nice comeback route on the outside. He's on the move. He usually throws well on the move. I got to believe that that ankle is affecting him a little bit. That's what the accuracy of his throws thus far. It's that right ankle, the one he pushes off of. Under 10 to get the play off, and it appears that it's being changed. He got press coverage. He might want to go over the top. And they go to Peen. How about this? This play works. Pretty much giving it to him is never a bad idea. Gain of 11. Another first down. Sean Richardson on the stop. Now we'll see if Cincinnati, or they will, how they use their timeouts, I should say, in the final 42 seconds of this half. Coming up on ESPN3, this will be a treat. KC and the Sunshine Band. And there's Kalaros keeping it. And and he's laboring a little bit. Yeah, he took a hard left turn as soon as he saw Hayward. Gets it down to the 17-yard line. Second and seven is next. He did get out of bounds, but watch. Tell me if you think that kid's 100% running the football. Actually, you know what? Didn't look as bad on, on the replay. I don't know that he has that, that fifth gear, that extra explosiveness that I've seen out of him, but he's not ripping. Some late substitutions by Cincinnati, and we have the officials stepping in here. He's still got plenty of time as yeah. the play clock now just gets to 10. That's Woods in motion. 
Galaros toward the end zone. Oh, my, that could have been a touchdown for Alex Chisholm. It'll be third and seven instead. Yeah, that's just a, a horrible Personal job. foul. Looking faster in the defense number 97. After this to the goal, automatic first down. Jared Morse with a late hit on Kalaros. But Alex Chisholm has to make this catch, you know, obviously, but this, this is a really nice throw. And you see Kalaros, he gets hit late, and particularly late, and you just can't do that. But, man, Chisholm, a true freshman, he'll have nightmares about that one. And I'll tell you what, even when he graduates, he's going to remember that. Oh, remember that one I dropped in the Liberty Bowl? Touchdown. That, that's one that will haunt a guy for a long time. Kalaros changing the play again. This is a real drop. Cincinnati has yep. had in this game. Under a lot of pressure, lobbing it to the end zone to the back. The catch is made, but out of bounds by Anthony McClung. And now 18 seconds to go. Eric Samuels defending. Still, that's a whale of a pass, I think, by Kalaros. And it looks like him running the football, in my mind, lets him know, hey, I'm okay. And maybe that's what he needed, just a chance to run the football and get his mind back, and that knocks the rust off a little bit. We'll see, because he should have a touchdown pass by all rights on this drive, as Chisholm just dropped that one. Only eight touchdowns in the last 19 red zone trips for Cincinnati. Kalaros. To the end zone, got his man, touchdown Cincinnati, it's McClung. What you get is a double move by Anthony McClung, and there's no reason. Here he is right here, he's going to watch, tap his feet and then go beyond. There's no reason to bite on a double move. Uh, you know, the end zone is behind you. Let him catch it in front of you. And don't bite on that double move there. And they got him to in a nice throw. Good patience by Kalaris and an excellent route by McClellan. So the fourth down failure by Vanderbilt leads to Cincinnati's only drive of the game so far. Started at the own 44-yard line. Nine plays, 56 yards in two minutes and 19 seconds. And they still have their timeouts. They never ended up using any of them. Pretty good drive. Yeah, it really was. The best that they have had all game. And the Bearcats smiling, and why not? As they're seeking their 10th win, the co-Big East champions. And let's check in with Quint Kesnick, who's got Butch Jones. Coach, after struggling to move the ball, that, that whole first half, that last drive, all of a sudden you have success. What happened? Well, we were able to establish the run, and that's the big thing for us to be an effective offense. We have to be balanced, and we're starting to establish the run. We were behind the whole first in the field position game. I thought our defense did an exceptional job of getting off the football field. How do you best ca characterize the play of Zach Kolaris? Gutty. Uh, best story in all of college football in this bowl season. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. At the half, our score is Cincinnati 14 and Vanderbilt 7. We'll be back with the H&R Block Halftime Report after these messages. And we welcome you back to the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Cincinnati and Butch Jones in front. Here in Memphis, 14 to seven. The only real drive Cincinnati had off of a failed fourth down play. Puts the Bearcats in front, 14 to seven. Kuchesnik on the field, Ray Bentley. I'm Dave Lamont again, an early happy new year. Hope you have a great and safe one tonight. And Ray, an interesting first half. We have had no third downs converted by the team that's ahead. Only two by Vanderbilt. It has been defense dominated. It really has, and both quarterbacks have struggled, Dave. But we have had some highlights we got to take a look at. Oh, this is the interception by Hayward, setting up the Commodores for their first and only score and it's going to be Zach Stacy taking it in from the five Vanderbilt goes up seven to nothing then you got George Wynn in and Isaiah Peed was out with a broken chin strap so Wynn took <laughs> advantage of his shot there going 69 yards for the touchdown here it is at fourth down the jump pass from Stacy looking for his tight end did not convert put Cincinnati in great position they drive down McClung makes the touchdown catch the only reception by a receiver for the Bearcats there in the first half and there's our quarterback stats today brought to you by Dove men plus care you see those and it's I'll tell you 
not a good day thus far for either of these quarterbacks. I expect that they'll get a lot better here coming up in the second half. And of course with Kalaros, the minus nine has said to do with sacks in college football. If you weren't aware, the sacks count against your rushing totals. And Cincinnati's front line also, we got to mention that the Bearcat front line, and they'll be out on defense first as Vanderbilt will begin the half of the football. That front group has played extremely well. And J.K. Shea for the linebacker. Bomar, too. Both those guys behind that defensive line making plays. Final half of this AutoZone Liberty Bowl underway. Breezy day in Memphis. And hang on here. Football is loose. And it's recovered by Cincinnati at the 15-yard line. And that's, that's Woodard. Yep, Orion Woodard, a receiver, senior from Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, able to fall on this ball that's mishandled by Eric Samuels. Yeah, Samuels took his eyes off it because it bounced in front of him. He's looking downfield to see what kind of danger he's in, and he never puts it away. And then a hustling uh, Woodard coming down the field comes up with the football and a big play, a momentum swing changer here for the Bearcats if they can punch this in. And Samuels is going to have to try to do something to get it back. They fake to Pete. Caleros in trouble. Throws it. And might have thrown that low, but what a catch. I think he tried to throw it away. I Robinson too. said, no, nah, you know what? I think I can reach that. And with that six foot five frame, he is able to go down and get it. There's no gain. Maybe a foot. I thought the same thing. I thought he was just, oh, I don't want anything to do yeah, with this thing. You know, just going to throw this one away. And you know, Robinson said, no, nah, I'll get it. I'll go get it. They gave him a yard, second and nine. Isaiah P down at the bottom. Pressure dropped. P. Carlos's face says it all right there. Yeah, you know what? He, he tried to be too cute with his fake to the front side. And by the time he turned back, he wasn't set up to make a decent throw. And that's part of the rust that you have is you see the sign going up. All those symbols mean something for the Bearcat offense. Is that Kevin Euclid up there in the upper right-hand corner? He's a Cincinnati alum. Well, all those things have uh, they're, they're mnemonic devices to help you remember stuff. What? Because some guys have problems with that, dude. What? Exactly. With one second left on the play clock, Kalaros drops the ball, and he's going to have to eat it at the 24-yard line. So Cincinnati has such a day, 15, and they end up going back nine yards. And Kalaros just dropped I can't think of any other way to describe it, so now they're going to have to trot out the field goal team and Tony Miliano. Well, let's watch the coverage down the field. Freeze it right there, fellas. You got coverage here, here, up top, here as well. This guy's running into somebody there. There's nowhere to go with that football. Good job by the back end of the Vanderbilt defense. Miliano, 16 for 22, as long as it's 48, but he kicks him low. He's had three blocked. Low snap. And that one's not even close. Mm. Just imagine the, the folks who went to the uh, hot dog or the brisket in their nacho line. They're not getting back to the seat. So what I miss? First minute, they know nothing going on, right? Well, they missed a fumble kickoff and missed field goal. But we aren't going to miss an opportunity to visit with Quinn. As I spoke to Vandy coach James Franklin as he was coming out of the locker room, he's typically Mr. Positive. Well, he, he was pretty negative. I, I got to tell you, he said, we couldn't have played worse in the first half between the penalties, bad execution, missed assignments, missed gaps defensively. He says, but it's an all-new half. We weren't ourselves, and we hope to see ourselves in the second half. Injury note, keep your eye on wide receiver Chris Boyd fighting a hamstring. Thank you, Quinn. We saw him pull up in that second quarter, so we'll watch for number 80. Meantime, Rodgers going toward the far sideline and being ridden out of bounds by Cameron Cheatham with Jordan Matthews, and that sends a toward that sideline. And Cheatham's just, he's got to get his head around and find the football. If he does that, he, he probably intercepts this thing. Pass interference. 
on the defense number 21. A 15 yard penalty. First down. Now go back to what uh, Quint said to James, uh, whether James Franklin said to Quint, do you agree with it? Uh, absolutely, I, I do. But neither team played very well in the first half. But you see Cheatham right there, and there's no doubt that's pass interference, but really there's no need for it. He had the receiver pinned to the sideline. He had great position. Get your head around, find the football. He could have picked that thing off very easily. Yeah, it didn't look like there was any way Matthews could have caught that ball in bounds anyhow. So the ball's at the 39-yard line for Vanderbilt. And Smith, a couple of play action fakes, and he goes forward. Wolf will bring him down. Uh, gain of a couple, we have second down and eight. And Wolf, to the relief of everybody rooting for Vanderbilt, is coming out of the yeah. game for a player, too. Yeah, he, he's a special player, and I see him uh, definitely playing on Sundays. Uh, I was going to ask you that. Yeah, he's going to go. I don't know that he's going to be a uh, first or second day selection. He's got that possibility. We'll see how he performs at the combine, but he will play. This is Jordan Matthews trying to get to the marker, and he's going to be dragged down by J.K. Schaefer and friends. Chris Williams in a number 20. A little bit short, it appears to us. So it'll set up third down, and yeah, it's a full yard to go. Boy, Chris Boyd had a pancake block out on the corner that allowed Matthews to get that extra yardage. And as Quentin reported earlier, Boyd's been fighting a hamstring problem in this game, but he did a nice job on that block right there. There he is checking out. I'd love to see a naked bootleg here. How about a handoff to Zach Stacy instead? Schaefer will drag him down with some help, but that's going to be an impressive run for Vanderbilt, almost to the 20-yard line. Wesley Richardson, considered the quarterback of the Cincinnati defense, veteran secondary man in there on the stop with Schaefer. Yeah, watch Kyle Fisher, this big number 72, pull out and make a quick block. He's got to get his eyes up quick, and he sees the pressure. Bam, right there. He pins the contained man down to the ground. That allows Stacy to get off the edge. Good looking Vanderbilt drive that began at their own 48-yard line. A tasty treat being worked up by Vanderbilt to get it inside the 10 to Jordan Matthews. A pickup of 15. And Larry Smith is doing a whale of a job running this offense right now. I mean, he stepped in and he's making good decisions. He's making the right reads and he's getting rid of the ball quickly. And the pace is different. They're running hurry up. This is the pitch out to Seymour. Seymour down to toward the goal line. Jordan Rodgers is a good teammate. He's going to applaud that. Just wants to win. But you're right, Dave. And that's something that this Vanderbilt offense did early in the year with Smith at quarterback. They ran the no huddle, hurry up uh, type of tempo of offense. And that's what he's comfortable with. And they've gone to that in this drive. And it's been their most effective drive of the day. He plays 52 yards, 224. It really is their only drive of the day. When you think about it, I mean, one. they had a 22 yard drive, but that's hardly considered a drive that was that led to the first touch down following a Calaros interception. There you go. Just a toss sweep student body to the right and he gets up in behind uh, his center Wesley Johnson and Johnson never even has to block anyone. Watch 67. He's, where are they? He just goes into the end zone and right down the coattails. Zach Stacy yes. the end zone. Excuse me. Uh, Jaron Seymour. Yeah, that's his fifth touchdown run of the season. So interestingly, neither Stacy or Rogers figures in that touchdown as it was a handoff of Smith to or the pitch out to Seymour. So you got to think that there's not going to be a quarterback change whether Jordan Rogers says he's healthy or not. Not now, not after that. And he's in that dime position with Stephen Clark out. Remember the hit on right. the kick return? He is out with a broken sternum. Oh, oh man. Flores has room to run. He'll throw instead, and it is caught by Kelsey. Wow! Kenny Ladler tried to pick that off the safety and instead the big junior from Cleveland Heights Ohio gets 13 and a UC first down with 20 seconds to go in our quarter. But that one's all about Kalaros him keeping the play alive extending it with his feet keeping his eyes down the field coming up with a clutch throw. And with Pete still not available win will likely end the quarter straight ahead for maybe about a half a yard. We expected a competitive game between two programs that are very motivated to win this, and we have just that. A good-looking fourth quarter as the Bearcats stampede down the field. Everybody runs for UC when it's fourth quarter time. 
Just letting you know they're going to be there for that fourth quarter. That's something Bush Jones instituted with this football team. That's the king and his lady friend Lucille bringing us into the fourth quarter in the home of the Blues, Memphis, Tennessee. Beautiful day. We start the fourth quarter with the tenth play of this Cincinnati drive. Look out. Third and ten. George Wynn got hit by Casey Hayward. And Cincinnati thin at running back already with Isaiah Pete out. Let's see if Wynn is able to stay in. Well, and Hayward's playing a cover two there, so he's got the flat. He sits in the flat, and then he times this thing up, and that's a vicious blow right there, and right in the breadbasket of George Wynn. And Clean, though. Yeah, Kolaris, <laughs> he's going to hear about that one from his buddy George Wynn, saying, hey, man, you want to think about hanging me out to dry a little bit better next time. Kolaris down the field toward the end zone. Is it good? No. The official rules it out of bounds. Alex Chisholm caught it, but not in bounds. Boy, that's close, man. I, if he, It just depends on if he came up with the football, because it looked to me like he got the foot in as he's making this grab. Let's take another look at it, see if we can see here. Yeah, I think that toe hit the ground. But but, yeah, he never ended up with the football. That's the problem. You're right about but, the toe. I agree right completely. There, bam, that toe's in, but he just didn't finish with the football. You see that ball out? It's actually ended up in the hands of the, since, uh, excuse me, Vanderbilt defender over there. Tony Miliano is 0 for 1 today. Missed from 41 wide right. Now he's lining up from 44 as the wind at his back. We've had a brisk breeze all afternoon into the evening hours. He kicks a low ball. He had three blocked already this year. Got that one up. And good. So the 17th field goal made by Miliano. And Cincinnati retakes the lead by three. A clutch kick by Tony Miliano. His long of the season prior to this one, Dave, was just, well, 48 yards. So it's well within his range. But you saw it come out low. Yeah, his trajectory, he's been criticized for that. But he was able that time. Vanderbilt really didn't get any penetration either. So that had a lot to do with it. However, the last time Vanderbilt had the football, they moved it smartly down the field with Larry Smith in at quarterback, replacing Jordan Rodgers. will drive Hal three yards deep and he'll go for it. He has one touchdown return this year versus Georgia. He won't get one here in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. So from the 24-yard line, let's see what they do. And Larry Smith on a design run gets almost 10 yards. He's going to get eight and tripped up there by Devin Drain. It'll be second down and two. So Jordan Rodgers started the game, and there you see what Vanderbilt did for him and how much better it looks right now for Smith. Made by Chris Boyd, getting some great blocking from Tate. Look at this. That sets him up to go down the sideline. It's a race, and it'll be won by Boyd. The hamstring bothering him, but he'll get into the end zone. He gutted that thing out. You can see him taking on a little water at the end there. But he is able to gut it out and with a bad hamstring finish that play. And what a throw there by Larry Smith. You say, well, it's just a little outside bubble screen throw, but he threw it and that'll and in doing so allowing boards uh, Boyd's momentum to continue up the field. And how about the block of Wesley Tate? That was opens nice. up the sideline and allowed Boyd to work his way down there. What a quick answer. Two plays, 76 yards, and Vanderbilt in charge. They had a 7-0 lead early. This is their first lead since the first quarter. Jordan Rodgers benched, but he's still happy for his teammates. Nobody happier than Larry Smith. Nobody unhappier than Butch Jones in Cincinnati. There you go. That's the Gibson Guitar Factory. You got some beauties there. I'll probably find a Les Paul model if you'd like. Some of the greatest guitar players ever have picked up a Gibson. We have a nice game here in the second half of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Both these teams struggling a little bit in the first half. Vanderbilt says we play for six seconds all the time. That's what that means. James Franklin trying to get in just the fifth bowl game in Vanderbilt history. 
And the last one they played in 2008. They played in 1955, 1974, 1982, 2008. Now here at the, the eve of the end of 2011. It's a program that has had to fight Ray, and it's one of the things James Franklin talked about, just the perception. He said even when he went to SEC media days, he felt like he was being talked down to. Yeah, he said they're asking him different kind of questions than they asked everyone else. He said, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? What's going on here is Abernathy with a nice-looking return. Nice, a cutback by Abernathy, and he has a chance to go all the way. And Ralph David Abernathy, the fourth, is in the end zone. on that play Abernathy answers 90 yards Boy, special teams always make a difference in a ball game and when you can spring one like they did there that's just huge for Butch Jones and his Cincinnati Bearcats he's like let him down I want some of them <laughs> wow <laughs> you saw the gap open up the question was, could he break a tackle or two? And right around the 40-yard line in Cincinnati territory, he broke a tackle and made the move he needed. And obviously, the great speed. That's his first touchdown return this season. And it's Vanderbilt ball again. Now, the interesting thing here is Cincinnati's defense has to figure out a way to deal with the resurgent Vanderbilt offense. Butch Jones. Had some opportunities in this coaching offseason to look at some other jobs. Folks were chasing him down, but he re-ups with Cincinnati as they have made a commitment to improve football, and so has Vanderbilt when they brought James Franklin on board. There you see what's happened in the last 5.02. If you're just joining us, the game, frankly, has not always been like this, but you've come at a good time. Pull up a seat. 57,000 plus great crowd here in Memphis on a perfect day. We kicked off at 66 degrees. All right, your turn, Andre Howe. Fumble! Looked like Vandy may have gotten it, but wait a minute, they're still fighting this one over. Yeah, Vanderbilt got it. Yeah, pretty sure that uh, it looks like Seymour, number 18. Oh, actually, Daniels, number 18. They got two number 18s out there playing today. Daniels is the one who ended up on the football, a heads-up play. It's the only double numbers they have, too, amazingly enough. Right there, the foot gets tipped, and that kind of leads into the return man not really uh, expecting that hit right there. Big hit coming from number 43. Thrown and complete second to ten. All right, Robert, thank you very much. What a great setting that is just for a football game in San Francisco right there on the water. We have a pretty nice setting here. The tradition of the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium. Larry Smith going to go again, dong down that sideline and forget about it. The wind really gusting around here today, too. We're getting some papers blown all over the place. And it's going to be a little tricky now. Look at this. Munchie Legault getting his warm-up tosses in. We have not seen the other quarterback, Jordan Newell, at all. And maybe this means Kalaros is not healthy. Well, you got to take and, and get Munchie ready just in case. You know, sometimes you, you take a shot to an injured area and it'll recover pretty quick. But you take that initial blow and you're limping and you're wondering, but... You know, a lot of times you'll be able to shake that thing off in the more time that you have. We'll see. Also, I think the ankle hurts more after you throw an interception. Yeah, that tends to make everything look a little bit worse. Vanderbilt's going to take a timeout. They have two left. Let's check in with Quinn. You guys made some really good points because, uh, you know, you look at Zach Kalaros and after the doctors and trainer Bob Mangine looked at him, he, he is fine. I think it's just a case of, of Munchie Legault saying, you know what, I haven't thrown the ball in, in about two hours. The temperature's dropping. If something will happen to Zach, i got to be ready to go in there. So let's toss the ball a little, just kind of wake, wake my body, wake my arm up. Thank you, Quinn. Let's go back and take a look at the play that we showed you earlier and watch the very end of it, what happens to Kalaros, and it's the right ankle. Yeah, that's the ankle that's injured, and, and no problems here at all, but it's going to be one of these late in the down where he's going to get, actually, Greenstone gets thrown onto his foot, and that gets, uh, you know, lands on that spot and gets him getting up a little slow and 
and having to deal with that thing. And we go back to this on November 12th when they were playing West Virginia at Paul Brown Stadium, a home game. And right there, you see the twisting in the angle, the ankle getting wrapped up underneath the rusher, Bruce Urban from West Virginia. And that looked like there was no way after that play that Kalaris would be able to work himself back to be able to play in a bowl game. Larry Smith on third and ten going to try to make it happen, and that Cincinnati defense is not going to let him make it happen. John Hughes, number 40, among the tacklers that time. So a gain of a couple of yards and nothing there. Well, again, we talked about Calaro, so what he had to go through. First off, he caught a break on the date of the bowl game. Let's say they were invited to a bowl game that was before Christmas Day. There was no chance he was going to be able to make it, so he caught a break there. Then he had, obviously, successful surgery, dedicated rehab hours and hours and then he would rehab for hours at home additional and, and Butch Jones you know in watching that and watching what Kolaris did to get himself ready that's why he calls it the best story in college football bowl season this year and the second best story oh, Isaiah Pete went for the fair catch did he hang on or did he muff it let's see he definitely muffed it. The question is, did he get back on top of it? And he did initially, but there are some Vanderbilt players down in the bottom of that pile doing everything they can to pull it away from Isaiah P. And he, they didn't do it. Well, I was about to say that I was about to joke that the second best story is that he actually made a fair catch, but he didn't make it. <laughs> he went for it. Here's your classic muff right here. Took his eyes off the ball, slipped through his arms, down on the ground. He recovered it. There's your score in time in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Zach Kolaros rallying his Bearcats. We mentioned uh, what he has done in the last few weeks of the rehab. What about his career at Cincinnati? These are ranks updated through tonight, so he has had a very distinguished college career. And, Ray, to be honest, we've talked about it. We really don't see him as a pro prospect, but he's ready to take the next step in his life, and that is to become a college coach. And that's something that he's always wanted to do and, he's, you know, been raised to do it in his mind, and he's looking forward to it. But yes, he, he is. To finish this one out. Well, he's got Isaiah P. That's always a good idea. P. rumbling across into Vanderbilt territory for an 18-yard pickup. He's over 100 yards unofficially. Yep, he is officially now. 114 on 21 carries. I'll tell you, Isaiah P. To to me is NFL ready. I mean, he's an all-around back, incredible explosiveness. I, I see him as uh, somebody uh, getting a steal in the draft with him coming up next April. And normally he catches the football better than he has shown today. That's an eight-yard pickup. Casey Hayward has a few words for him after the tackle, and it's I'm not surprised to see this level of intensity going up. As we've talked about, for both these teams, they have a lot to play for. You got to give a lot of credit to this Cincinnati offensive line too. They have picked things up throughout this ball game. And they go to Pete again. This time he just disappears in the traffic. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and three. For the Bearcats, they're trying to get a tenth win, a ten-win season after winning only four last year. And Butch Jones. They're trying to improve the facilities, trying to let everybody know he wants to stay at UC, signs a new deal. For Vanderbilt, a winning season they're playing for. It's only the fifth game the Commodores have ever been in. So here's a big play in this football game. Third and a couple for UC to keep this drive alive. Push afterwards, and you see how quickly some of his teammates come in there to defend him. Rob Lohr in there, a junior from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, on the stop. And that's a big chain mover for the Bearcats. This is a, a great job of the quarterback, Kolaris. Watch him. He's usually in on a play like this. He's supposed to go outside after he fakes it. Well, he saw, you know what? I should have given that ball. So instead. I'm going to just follow him up into that same hole that I see. Had he taken that outside, he was going to be doomed. He wasn't going to get the first down. Man, they're not messing around here. They're just going to give it to their big man. But that time, Pete is tripped up by Ladler for a loss of a yard. Well, one of the big improvements, Ray, for Cincinnati in this half and why they've moved the ball is their third down performance. They whiffed on their first eight. Since then, they're four out of six. And I think, you know, when... Uh, 
our buddy Quint interviewed Butch Jones going in at halftime and said, you know, we've established the run. Well, they've continued to do that here in the second half. And Don Mahoney, their offensive line coach, is one of the best in the country. And he has got this group playing extremely well. He's got three seniors, the center, uh, Davis, and then Martinez and Hoffman at left side of the line. There are a bunch of war daddies up there. Kalara's little option for Peed. Can he make two people miss? No, they get him. No gain, really. Chris Marv in there. And John L. Thomas, number 98, a redshirt junior out of the Orlando area in there. So no gain. It's going to be third down and 10. Good hustle by Thomas. He not only uh, made the play, but he also forced the pitch. And that's on Kolaris. He needed to attack Thomas a little bit more before he made that pitch. So it at least takes him out of the other part of the play. backfield set Kalaros lobs it up into the wind that's got to be a flag I realize Eddie Foster's going to argue this but it, yeah. and he's going to claim that he was held well he, he thinks that he got face masked is what his complaint is and we'll find out if he did pass interference on the defense number 16 the ball is placed on the spot of the foul automatic first down all right let's see if they were on the spot as they have been pretty much all day today Yeah, I didn't see a face mask out of, out of that, and I certainly did see pass interference as uh, Foster, he wrapped him up, didn't let McClung get past him. We review Ray Bentley's focus points for Cincinnati, and Isaiah Peed has certainly paid off. We'll revisit those in a moment. George Wynn in there at tailback, and it's Kalaros who's willing to take a hit. This this might be the last drive of his career at Cincinnati, for all we know. That's a three-yard pickup. So your second focus point was to knock the rust off of Kalaros and then stopping Zach Stacy. and uh, how they done so far. Well, you see the numbers right there, and I, I tell you what, if Kalaros still had rust on him, he just got it knocked off on that last <laughs> running play. But he has played much better in the second half. Uh, I think He's run this offense pretty good. You saw the last one. They have shut down Zach Stacy relatively, only allowing 53 yards. Here's a guy that averages over 100 every game. So I think they did a nice job hitting those focus points. Second down and seven. The clock bleeding away slowly, but it's still so close that Vanderbilt may not be an issue yet. They run wide. This is going to help them. This speed gets nothing and gets out of bounds. Marvin there again for Vanderbilt, number 13 on the stop. What a career he is at. He's already graduated, and he's got big plans. He's not even sure that about the NFL, but he is certain that he wants to do something with his life. It's the, maybe running for the mayor of Memphis. He's home. He's got about 100 family members around here today. He's playing his last college game in his hometown, a town he has deep affection for. And he's such a leader with his Vanderbilt team. When James Franklin got the job, it was Chris Marv who went to the airport and picked him up when he showed up in Nashville and just wanted to get off on the right foot and let the coach know I'm here, baby, and I'm going to do what I got to do to keep this, get this thing going in the right direction, and he's been a big part of it. Kolaros, middle of the field toward the end zone, missed it. Fourth down and seven coming up. Kolaros wants uh, pass interference. His receiver they, they either mistimed his jump or just never got off the ground or jumped up. It looked like he jumped up into the defender, Richardson. And, you know, that's no fault of Richardson, so they did a nice job of keeping the flag in their pockets. Big kick coming up for Tony Miliano, who's one for two. Again, we've talked about the low trajectory on his kick. This one will be 39. That's blocked. The fourth kick blocked again. Cincinnati and down the sideline is Wilson, but he cannot stay in bounds. Looked to me like that was number 15. Uh, Archibald Barnes, who jumped up and got the block. And he's going to come from the outside. He's going to go between that guard. This area is right here. Watch the effort he gives getting through there and then laying out to get the block on his kick. Bam, right there. Knocks it down. That's an outstanding play. But 
Not a good kick. That kick's got to come up higher. There's no way the guy on the edge should ever be able to block a kick coming on that type of an angle. And that's been a problem for the Bearcats. The fourth time Miliano has been blocked, and now Vanderbilt with some momentum off of that. They have first and 10 at their own 32-yard line with two timeouts, and Larry Smith taking over for Jordan Rodgers at quarterback. This is Zach Stacy. He has been held largely in check, but he rips everybody across for about a four-yard pickup to the 36-yard line. Blocked field goals have cost Cincinnati before. Remember that November the 12th game when Kalaros was hurt? Well, Tony Miliano had a chance to tie this with three seconds to go, and it was blocked in West Virginia. Or excuse me, uh, by West Virginia. By West Virginia at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, ending the Bengals' six-game win streak. Zach Stacy has now gone over 2,000 career rush yards. It took him a while to get there. He began with 1,945 across the middle. Intercepted by Cincinnati. Taken by Nick Temple. And Jordan Matthews, he has this ball, and he just tips it right to the defender for the interception. I mean, this is just good luck for Nick Temple and the Cincinnati Bearcats. Here you go. Watch, watch this thing. This is a good pass right here. Bam! Hits him in the hands. Actually, it was a little bit behind him. And you, you gotta say, you gotta give that much to Matthews. Larry Smith threw that ball a little bit behind him, but he tipped it directly to Nick Temple. The true freshman makes the interception. Third Vanderbilt turnover. We've had five turnovers in the game. Now the Vanderbilt defense will be asked to come up with a big stop here. Cincinnati takes over at the Vandy 31-yard line. Got to think we're going to get a heavy dose of Isaiah Pede here. And they fake it to him. Kalaros underneath to Kelsey, the big tight end. What a play there. Chase Garnum has played an outstanding game for Vanderbilt. He held that to a three-yard gain, second down and seven. And the good news for Vanderbilt is Garnum is only a sophomore. Yeah, he's been outstanding. Excuse me, when he went out, it, it really created a hole in this Vanderbilt defense. And to have him back full speed, you can see the, the impact that he makes as you get ready for that Chick-fil-A Bowl coming up next. Should be fun. What a great story Virginia has been this year. And Auburn is always entertaining. This is Isaiah P. Turns on the Jets. P inside the 15, and he's finally hurled out of bounds by Garnum. But Isaiah P for 16 yards. I'm telling you, this offensive line, coached by Don Mahoney, is outstanding. Watch these guys step, 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 and get their blocks. And there's nobody getting off a block. I mean, nobody's able to get off the block and get away from the guy on them to come off and make a play. And when you give that kind of effort for a guy like Isaiah Pede, he's going to reward you with a heck of a run behind you, and he did it again. The Pede cheering section right there. There you see his numbers. And when does Vanderbilt start to use those two timeouts? It's Pede again. They may not have to. He'll stroll in. Isaiah Pede may have wrapped up the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Great blocking again. A little bit of over pursuit by the second level of the Vanderbilt defense. You can't do that to a guy with the vision that Isaiah Pede has because he will sting you with it every time. And that vision led it once, I'm sure, out of that left side there. He saw how open it was once he got away from the traffic and it was a stroll. saw Pete do the Superman that Cam Newton made famous, and he has been today Cap the uh, Capital One player of the game. That was uh, unanimous was vote say, Capital booth. One. It's actually the AutoZone Liberty Bowl player of the game. And we got ahead of ourselves. We're going to do that one in a... Oh, they're going to name it Capital One uh, well, the, just for the whole bowl week? Just for the player of the game. Okay. God. We are at the AutoZone I, Liberty. I started to say Capital One. I no, this no, we'll, that, that, we'll be there on, on uh, Monday. Didn't Marv Levy ever teach you to take it one game at a time? Yeah, I never listened to that. That's too busy. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, Marv's probably watching one Sorry, of his old boys. Don't say that. Now, you got to say where else would you rather be right here right now to make up for it? 
Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? <laughs> there you go. No, I mean that. <laughs> no, you kidding? I love this. Come on. All right, now, Larry Smith. It's on him. Two timeouts. He's going to have some work to do. Yeah, that's going to be a lot against the Cincinnati defense. They have they have adjusted to Larry Smith. That's the other thing. He came in. I don't know how much I'm sure Cincinnati prepared for Larry Smith. There's no question they did. But he changed everything. The tempo changed. All of it changed. But now Cincinnati has adjusted. Uh, the problem with, with Larry Smith, though, is the passing game is not his strength. And that's what they need is a pure passer right now. And they also need uh, guys to hang on to the football. Yeah, Brandon Barton that time. Unable to hang on to. By the way, I, particularly for those of you who are Cincinnati fans, at the conclusion of our game, just log on to ESPN3 to see live coverage of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl trophy presentation. And some of you who are watching us via that website, just stay right there. You'll be able to see that. Second and ten. Dumps it off to Zach Stacy. And Stacy wisely gets out of bounds, but he's short of the first down. Gain of five, third down and five. Oh, I like how James Franklin has that attached to his belt. So no matter what, that play calling sheet isn't going anywhere. <laughs> That's thoroughness right there. That's thinking of everything. He's probably lost one at one point or yep. another and said, I need a way to, to fasten this thing to me. Well, he needs to find something, some, some magic on that play sheet. He needs to start getting down the field a little more quickly. And that's going to be a first down as Brandon Barton made the catch, but there's a flag down at the back of the 26-yard line. Personal foul, roughing the passer on a defense number 54. A 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. Well, that'll get him down the field quickly. And with no time on the clock, Walter Stewart is called for this. Yeah, and, and no excuse for it. Stewart just keeps going. He actually hits him in the head with his right hand, and he came just late, and there's no need for that at this point in the game, particularly. James Franklin agitated momentarily about something. Don't forget, we have our game day special edition coming up. We'll tell you more about that in a moment, but you're going to want to stay with the game day group. Smith under fire, and he throws it away. Well, short of the first down. Third down coming up and about five to go. Cincinnati just keeping everything in front of them as they should. Chris Williams among the tacklers there for UC. And it's beginning to look more and more for a big bowl win for the Big East. No conference in all the conference upheaval that dominated the headlines for the last few months in college football. No conference has been cuffed around more than the Big East. This is probably a very gratifying win to take down an SEC school. Clock was adjusted a couple of seconds, so it's a minute and one, and now counting. Under some pressure, nifty move by Smith, and open at the 25-yard line. And inside the 20 is Jordan Matthews. Vanderbilt just with one timeout, a gain of 25. They're going to have to really move. The clock will start when the umpire says he's ready, and the chains are in position. Excuse me, Dave. They need to throw it in the end zone right now. You have to get your touchdown as quickly as possible. That means throw it in the end zone. They're letting time run off. They've got confusion, and they have to burn a timeout. And that's their last one. And you saw the word confused, along with a couple of others that I can't say, come out of James Franklin's mouth. Let's see if Vanderbilt follows Ray's dictum to get in the end zone now. And that's they're going to try. Up for grabs, overthrown incomplete. Matthews, the intended receiver, Devin Drain, in there on the coverage. Second down and 10. I continue to take shots into the end zone. You get to fourth down, you kick your field goal, and then kick your onside kick because you're down 10. But you really would like to, if you're Vanderbilt, get a touchdown out of this particular drive and then only have to get the field goal on the back end. James Franklin's hopes of a winning season in his first year at Vanderbilt fading. Try again. Has a chance here. Oh, almost a great catch by Boyd. Cheatham in there on the coverage. Third down and ten. 
You know, it's kind of sad that uh, Vanderbilt, uh, when they lose, if they lose this game, will have a losing record. And I think it'll take a little time, but eventually they'll stand back and look at what they accomplished this year, which is a heck of a lot. I mean, yes. from where they've been and, and the, the kind of the tone that Coach Franklin has set now for this program, the expectations, I see them uh, being a, a bowl team again next year going forward. Pressure from the edge to the middle of the end zone, sliding incomplete. Matthews had a chance and Drew Fry 26 celebrating with his teammates Vanderbilt's last shot right here great play by Fry at the end of this because it did look like touchdown for Matthews but Fry gets in and is able to knock it down right at the last instant see him get his helmet actually is what hit the football he knocked it out with his head and here they are they are going to get that field goal as they need 10 points so this is a 35 yard attempt for Ryan Fowler and that's all he's done this year if he makes this kick it would be the longest in his career or is it a fake nope and he makes it all right good job for the redshirt junior well now you're going to have your onside kick, and that, that's really the the first step as to what Vanderbilt has to do because then you have to get in the end zone, get yourself a touchdown, then you make the decision whether or not you're going to try to win the thing here or, or go into overtime. And you've got two kickers out there. Yeah, and they've got it set up. They can go either way with it. I think they're going to go into the short side because you know, they, it looks to me, uh, I don't know. We'll see which kicker goes first. There you go, short side. So it's Fowler, and that's it. Cincinnati easily recovers it. DJ Woods makes the catch. He hasn't been a big part of the UC offense, but he wraps up the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. I tell you, you got to tip your cap to what Butch Jones and his staff have been able to do in such a short time since coming to Cincinnati. You know, he said last the group last year kind of had some entitlement issues. Some yep. of those guys thought they had things coming to him, and he had to break them of that habit. They went in January 3rd. They had their first meeting last year. He handed out T-shirts. Be a champion. Everything they've done from that time to this time was all about becoming a champion they did so in the Big East and now they're your AutoZone Liberty Bowl champions as well four wins last season they took down every reminder of the 2010 season when the year changed to 2011 and now as we get ready to ring in 2012 they will have a ton of momentum into the offseason with a 10 victory year for Butch Jones six more wins than a season ago and for Vanderbilt no disgrace they do finish six and seven but as Ray mentioned optimism in Nashville around this team attention in the community to this team is peaking and there is nowhere to go but up and you feel like they're already on their way there with James Franklin and his staff. Let's go on down to Quint with the winning coach, Butch Jones. Quint. Coach, congratulations. Uh, what was the turning point in the second half? Well, I think Ralph David Abernathy, when he hit the kickoff return, and we have a big three, and that was one of them. We needed to score on a kickoff return. We've been close all year. He took it to the house. How do you best describe what Isaiah Pete was able to do? You sent him to the locker room. He had some hamstring issues. 149 yards. Played like the Big East Offensive Player of the Year. Ten wins, a bowl win for your seniors. What, what does this mean for Cincinnati? It means everything. I, I still feel our program is in an elite status. It's very hard to have ten wins. You know, the other thing is we live in a sports center society. The greatest story in this bowl season is Zach Caleros. They see him making plays here, but they don't see the eight hours in the training room and the rehab. People turn sports center on and see the highlights, but they don't know what went on behind the scenes to get him ready to play tonight. Coach, congratulations. Thank Let's you. celebrate. Thank you. I think you will, Quinn, and thank you very much. And, well, we like the fact that we live in a sports center society, but the coach makes a great point about the contributions and the sacrifice made by Zach Kolaros. Once again, our final score is Cincinnati 31 and Vanderbilt 24. For live coverage of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl trophy presentation, log on to ESPN3. For Ray Bentley, Quinn Kesnick, and our entire crew, I'm Dave Lamont saying so long and Happy New Year from Memphis, Tennessee.